you have a distinct and very uh, different way, I think, of, of telling the stories that, that you choose. And it's in everything. It's in the acting, it's in the way of filming, it's in how you use music or choose not to use uh, music. Uh, how did you come up with your particular style? Trying to surprise myself. I mean, I've seen so many films. I worked many years also as an assistant. Everything is not on an intellectual level. It's much more on an impulsive and, and, and emotional level. And some things I really can't explain. Why would I like this and not this? And you know, but but also, of course, you have a little devil on your shoulder that says, "I'm going to do this because no, nobody wants me to do this." Then I'll do it. I'll try to get away with it. It's always very, very emotional, your work, yes. uh, on a level that makes at least me remember your stories very vividly. Uh, would you describe yourself as a person, as emotional? A lot, of, a lot of my filmmaking has to do with impulses and emotional impulses, and I don't always know what, where, what they come from, or why I do this or this, or why I like this music or that music and not. Uh, I'm trying to, to, to listen to my, my impulses. Uh, I'm trying to not to filter myself too much, I'm also trying to take care, take care of uh, the grey zones in every character uh, to make them more believable. Do you allow uh, your emotions to influence you when you're out on a shoot? You need to have a very good map, that's called a script, and you need to, 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 to have worked very much with that. You know that that map works and you will eventually get to the treasure. But if something happens during you know, your, your walk there or you're doing your search, you have to listen to it and you have to listen to actors, you have to listen to your impulses, you have to listen to and see moments and possibilities that comes because sometimes you know these are things that you would never come up with on paper. So you have to, you have to listen to that. I have to do that at least to be a good director, the director that I want to be. Uh, but I'm curious about your own thoughts about the whole Yeager affair when you read about the real thing. It is often said that um, uh, reality is much more uh, fantastic or, or, or hilarious or, or weird than, than, than fiction, you know. Um, so I got this treatment from, from uh, the writer, Marietta von Baumgarten, and uh, it was just uh, very intriguing to see that kind of story taking place uh, in Sweden. We're very used to see those kind of stories in, for example, American films or, 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 or French films or European films, but they, we seldom do them in Sweden. Um, that was a that was uh, the thing for me to make a, a Swedish uh, thriller that felt international. Uh, the movie is very much about the misuse of, of uh, power and how people yes. at the top, uh, they protect each other at uh, all costs. Do you feel that's a scenario that's sort of happening in society over and over again? Oh yes, I think it never ends. Here too, in Sweden? Of course, why would we be different? <laughs> What are your own thoughts about uh, power in uh, society and in politics? Ooh, that's a big question. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Not so easy to answer, perhaps. No, I don't think so. Um, I, I, my you... thoughts about it reflects, I think, in my film. And, I, and would I have uh, been able to talk about them in another way? I would have. But now I, I, I work in fiction, I'm a film director, so I express them through my film. Have you thought about uh, a lot about the dynamics in the real world when, when you're like, choosing a story like this to work with? Mm, yes, of course you do that. And of course you see things that you are uh, provoked by uh, when you watch the news or when you read the paper. So I would say yes. This is a film that takes place in the 70s, but still, uh, it also made me thought very much about the times I live in right now and what's happening around me. What has changed and what has absolutely not changed, for example. So what is the, the biggest change, would you say? Now you've been sort of diving real deep into the 70s and then you come out into Stockholm of 2012. What are your reflections about that? First of all, Stockholm was a much more cleaner city by then. It was also a much more, I think, uh, simpler country maybe. The fact that we had two TV channels, we had very clear political parties with, with defined ideologies. Um, we had also another openness. There was not this kind of... Uh, we were more naive in terms of how we presented ourselves through media, I think, also. Now everything is so thought of. You know, there's malls everywhere, commercials everywhere, cell phones everywhere. Communication is completely different now uh, from, from, from what we show in the film. 
What are your thoughts about the power in relationships? So basically every scene in Call Girl I think has elements of powers between a stronger person or a weaker person and those uh, relationships sometimes shifts and are blurred and for me it was very important to be in the grey zones not just to be in the fact that okay these are the bad guys these are the good guys it's not a question about that you're evil or that you're good I think you're both. If Hollywood would have done this story yes. uh, I thought about this one watching the movie I can see how they would have sort of focused on the political cover-up Yes. Uh, and most likely they would have shown kind of fast-paced and cool scenes from, yes. from the brothel. Yes. But you do not. I mean, you focus on the victims yes. and you make the story in a way that gives it a documentary feel that, for me as a, as a viewer, I mean, it was almost unbearable okay. to watch at times. Uh, how did you yourself feel when, when, when working with this material? I mean, is it possible to keep a distance to this? Because yes. it's so emotional and so yeah. strong. Yeah. My, my interest in this film was, was not to make a pure political thriller, only plot driven. It was really to sink into characters and how would that person feel in this situation uh, during this time, a time of you know, sexual confusion, freedom, uh, total freedom, and, and, and uh, it's a very special time in Swedish history. So um, I focused very much on, on, on every character and especially on what you call the victims or well, in this case, the girls. Uh, I mean, I think it's always uh, harder to watch than to actually work with, because when we work, we have all these, you know, uh, ways of, uh, you know, handling uh, our feelings in a way. So after the film is finished and put together, and with with the sound and the music and everything, when you watch it, I I guess you probably f that then it gets really intense, probably. If Do you we, feel if we something don't yourself when you watch it when it's when it's done? When, when uh, it's too early. I have to wait a little bit. Ah. You know, working with the film, you know, for months and months and months, then you become pretty numb after a while and you just have to rely on your earliest instincts about your choices. I mean, you've directed, for instance, the TV series Graven and, uh, and Laserman and yes. the now Call Girl. And, and, and when I look at the themes, the common denominator uh, to me is, is the darkness. Is it? In, okay. in, in us humans. Yes. What is it like working such heavy scenarios? I, I think that's that's where I want what I want to explore in films and what I like to show and what I also think actors like to portray. It. Where, where 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 is darkness? You can also find a lot of humor and a lot of, um, uh, you know, um, joie de vivre. Will your next story will be a light-hearted one? Uh, yeah, maybe it's it's going to be a very dark comedy. Who knows? <laughs> The movie is, like I said, it, it's inspired by the Jäger Affair, but, but, but it is a story, it's not a documentary in any way. And have you tried to like distance this story from what happened in reality? And how have you done that, if, if you've done it? It is a, a, a political thriller with, with all the elements and all the kind of cliches that you can use. And if you watch the film, you can clearly see that this is not a documentary, this is a... A uh, piece of fiction and how it's shot, how it's edited, how it's acted, you know, uh, music, everything. Uh, then there are, of course, scenes that are maybe closer to what you can read about, about this uh, so called Jäger affair or brothel affair that it was called. And uh, there's also scenes that, that are very explosive, very, very, very uh, uh, shocking, that, that are, you know, um, there to, to make the, our our story work. We make, I mean, we have, we define our own world using, of course, elements that we have read about or been inspired about, but it's not uh, uh, in any how uh, facts. How, how would I know what happened in closed room, by the way? I could never know that, so, you know. Uh, the real prime minister at that time was, was Olof Palme, and in the movie uh, you've chosen to show how even the prime minister is buying sex from one of the underage girls, and now Palme's family is upset, even, even though they haven't even yet seen the movie, uh, Morten Palme threatens to report Call Girl to the police. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that? This is a, a work of fiction, you know, so obviously it's not Olaf Palme, it's Magnus Krepper playing a prime minister in the 70s. So you didn't have Palme on your mind when choosing the actor to? No, no. Because you've been accused of that. Yes, of course. Of co I mean, when you do a film set in the mid-70s mid in Sweden, you, you're bound to be inspired by the people that were around, right? This is inspiration for a fiction. 
So, and if you have watched the film, you would see, and if you know something about the story, you would probably see that in that character, this character, that character. But a lot of the characters are composites of different people in different times, not even, and stuff, there's also things that are completely taken out of context from different, that are not, that didn't happen in the 70s that we have been inspired about, that happened in the 80s. So I would say, uh, no, this is a, these are fictional characters. See, Maya Berger uh, mentioned that he felt that you as a director put a lot of trust into yes. the people you work with. Yes, like I told you, I, 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 really, I really like to trust people, and, uh, but I can only trust people that I, that I like and that I respect and that I uh, can also, I mean, it's like sa safety net. I mean, for an actor, sh an actor wants you to, as a director, to, to in a way enforce their strength and, and, and make them believe in themselves and make them free to also go, you know, different ways. So, of course, if you have people that you really like and respect and that can do that for you, you would encourage that. So, yes, I also like that ambience on the set when you can really have, you know, fun and throw ideas around. Uh, you tend to win prizes. Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> three of your TV dramas have been awarded and some of them have gotten, I mean, loads of, uh, of uh, awards and Call Girl has already won its uh, first prize in the film festival at, in Tor Toronto. How do you feel about prizes? I mean, I feel good. It's great winning them, of course. Uh, couldn't deny that. But also, uh, it puts a certain pressure on you. You cannot... Um, rely on them, uh, you know, uh, you just have to, 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 to get them and forget about them. <laughs> so do they inspire you to do even better work or do they, yeah, they scare stress, you? They, they stress me to do better work. <laughs> no, but I, I, of course you feel the pressure, but you have to, when, when starting a new project, you have to, I mean, I had at least to have at least to completely forget about everything else and try to, to I mean, to forget about things that people have liked already. So, so I wouldn't feel the pressure of doing the same thing or, uh, being blocked by the fact of being scared of not being able to, to do anything better. So, and I mean, you know, just trying.